welcome to another episode of the Drift Games vlog. This one is a little bit different than the other vlogs we've done because I'm answering some questions that lots of people DM me, especially from Ireland, and this video is very much focused at people who are into cars or car enthusiasts in Ireland about how I afford my cars, how I insure my cars, how I make them legal, all that jazz. So I want to talk a little bit for, before we get into anything else, about the climate of having a performance or modified car in Ireland which pretty much sucks all the time because everything is kind of working away from it. So right now we're in a very tough time for car enthusiasts in Ireland simply because of the government. So tax on our cars in Ireland is number one why people don't have very high performance cars. They are very expensive to tax. You can tax a Lamborghini in the UK or even in two hours in the north of Ireland away from us for about the same price as a BMW diesel in Ireland. So that is also means that it's very, very tough to have a performance car and afford one. On top of that, insurance. If you're a young driver, uh, a lot of that is really impossible. They don't want to insure any older cars. They don't want to insure any cars over eight years old. And of course, all the cool cars that we like are very much that way. On top of that, emissions is a big issue. People want to get rid of all the petrol, high performance cars, or even diesel cars off the road in the next couple of years. And because we're in a culture where everybody's offended by everything, everyone wants every car to be really, really quiet. And yeah, the whole agenda is really to get us out of all of these performance cars and get us into little lifeless boxes of energy that just bring us from A to B. And most of the population are absolutely fine with that. But like me, you guys are into your cars if you're watching this video and you want to have some cool cars. And how do you go about it? Well, a lot of people have asked us how we have so many cars, how we insure all those cars and how we go through all that. So I'm going to try and break it down which is a little bit more complex than most situations, but it's still gonna kind of explain where we're at. So most important thing to remember is that you guys watch Drift Games, but we don't do Drift Games as our full-time job. There's actually three companies that are within one bigger company. So one of those is Zegan Promotions, which does a lot of uh, you know events and stuff like that. And it does basically live events, which haven't been happening a whole lot in the last year, but that's what that company is basically about. You Drift Games Drive, your Drift Games Bashes. We're vi I'm Vice President of Drift Masters. We do all of the media and social media for Drift Masters. We've been doing events in Saudi Arabia and the Emirates Drift Championship in Abu Dhabi and all that kind of stuff comes under Zegan Promotions. Then you have Loud by Design, which is a media marketing company which does like website design and digital marketing and advertising and filming and photography and all that good stuff and we do that for some of the biggest automotive companies in Ireland right now so that is obviously a big part of what we do and then the third part is Drift Games which you guys watch which is all of our cars and all of our projects and all that kind of stuff it would be wrong of us to say that Drift Games as a YouTube channel or as a brand really affords anything within Drift Games except for some certain parts. So the first thing I wanna say is that Drift Games itself as a YouTube channel, we're not a big enough YouTube channel to be paying for cars and paying for wages and all that kind of stuff. We, you know, you see our views, they're not crazy. We have a really good following, but we're not there yet. So a lot of that stuff comes from other places in those three companies. The third part is that with Drift Games, the Drift team in Drift Games is part of that business. So what's very important to remember is that my Corvette, my Mustang and Josh's new MX-5, those three cars are not owned by Josh or myself, they're owned by Drift Games, the company. So our money and investment, which you guys would have known at the start of the Game Changer series, the 100,000 euro we borrowed on behalf of Drift Games, goes into those cars. And all of the sponsorship deals to do with drifting or to do with the products in those cars all come from the Drift Games side of things. So sponsorship comes in, merchandise comes in, and very, very small amount of ad revenue from YouTube every year or every month comes into that pile and that goes into those drift cars. So the drift cars themselves are covered by that amount of money. So it's totally separate than the other cars you'll see on the channel. When it comes to Josh, his MX-5, his older MX-5, the NA with the turbo, that's actually Josh's personal car. He's had that car probably I don't know, maybe eight years, 10 years, I'm not sure. So that was his second car he'd ever owned. So he owns that car, it's obviously gone from a road car to a track car to a pro drift car, but that is his own car. And then he also has a Fiat 500 Abarth, which we all laugh at, but that is his own personal car. So that makes one, two, three, four, five, six, that's six of the cars out of the way of question. So all the drift cars are within the business and paid for from sponsorship and from all the merch and all you guys supporting us, that goes into the drift cars. Josh's cars are his cars. When it comes to my cars, this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. So I obviously have some of my own personal cars. And if you guys remember from previous videos, I've been probably trading, modifying, buying and selling cars for about 15 years now. So in those 15 years, I've gradually built up a certain amount of money that I've invested. I would say it is about 
4% of what I've spent is what I actually have now because obviously you know with modifying cars, they depreciate the cars. Right now it's a little bit different, everything's increasing, but that's how that works. So let's talk firstly about the car you guys love on the channel, the Spirit Ray or Rye, whatever you want to call it, uh, PS13. So that is a very expensive car. Uh, it was over, I'm not going to say exactly how much it was, but it was a good bit over 30,000 euro for a 91 PS13. But I saw it as a good investment because it is a 50,000 mile original 1991 Silvia and it looks pretty awesome. Now, how did I afford that car? Well, a bit of luck afforded me that car. About three or four years ago, I bought a Chevrolet Caprice for three and a half thousand euro. I put about, I would say 1500 euro and a lot of my friends time into that car. And I ended up selling that car for 7,000 euro. On top of that, last year, as you guys know from the channel, I won an A86 Corolla. Spent a few quid on it, but not a lot. And I got back, uh, I'm not gonna say how much, but a rather large sum, because Corollas have obviously gone up in a lot of value, and that was a particularly mint one. So I took the money from the Corolla and the money from the Caprice, put them together, and that was the PS13. So the PS13 is a 1991 car, which means that it's vehicle registration tax in Ireland, which is another reason that cars are terrible in Ireland to buy, is because we pay 33% more for every car than anyone does in the UK, which is obviously really annoying, and we can also drive what, an hour and a half from here and see people pay 33% less for cars. But anyway, we won't get too sour about it. We gotta get by it. But it is a case of that car will be vehicle registration tax of 200 euro. I've gotta pay some customs and import duty from the UK. Keeping on the theme of 1991 cars, I also own a Toyota Soar. Now that Soar came about from the fact that I also have personally a loan from the bank for a number of the cars uh, that will basically be on the channel. So in, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I pay uh, a loan and finance on the Porsche Cayman, the Soarer, and the E36 BMW that I bought recently. So they're all on a loan. So I pay a loan every month and that's how I got them. Now, that loan is also combined with the value I would have had maybe 20,000 euro worth of cars over that 15 years left over. So that kind of all goes into that. So I pay that every single month and it's pretty, pretty high. But again, I love cars as you guys know, and I spend about 50% of my wages and my earnings on car every month, whether it's upgrades or it's paying off the finance deals. Um, what other cars have we got on the channel right now? The Golf. The Golf is actually registered under the company because it is a commercial vehicle. We have a couple of vans and that is one of the vans. Now, while it now will not look like that anymore or like a normal van, it is registered as a normal van. It's doe and all that stuff. It's got its uh, commercial tax, so it, it is a van. So that's what I use for my everyday driving and that is uh, insured through the company. All right, guys, just want to break from this episode for one minute to thank some of our partners here at Drift Games. First one I want to thank is Tough Tile. Now, you guys will see Tough Tile on the floors of every cool garage in Ireland. It is an amazing bit of kit. Stop painting your floors and getting all tire marks and everything all over. You can see all the tire marks here on the painted floor, and then you see the Tough Tiles, and they look amazing. They actually hold up really well. We've been using them for a year in the garage, and we've been building drift cars from scratch. They hold up to all the wear and tear. Check out their website now. It's a lot more affordable than you think, and it makes your garage look awesome. I also want to thank Strom Wheels. We've been putting Strom DS25s on Mustangs, on road cars, and on this G35, and they look amazing on everything. They come in this hyper black, and they also come in a bronze, pretty affordable wheel, gangster and mounts a concave and look good and strong on any drift car or performance car on the road. So check out stromwheels.com. After that, a lot of people will talk about uh, how do you afford to run all of those cars? Well, it's actually not as complicated as you think. So the simplest fact is, is that the, we have a fleet insurance with our company. So most companies in Ireland, because we are an actual registered company, we are able to get fleet insurance because we have multiple vehicles on that fleet insurance. The reason it's easy to get fleet insurance for the likes of a Porsche Cayman, which is on that insurance policy, is because of the work we do. We actually work with cars, that is our job. So when it comes to insuring it, we actually use these vehicles as promotional vehicles, which is what they are, that's why you're watching this video. So the Porsche is insured under the company, under the fleet insurance, and that's how that works. So that goes, so is the Golf, and so is all of our vans. This is where it gets a bit more complicated with my own personal insurance. So when it comes to personal insurance, the E36 BMW is insured under my personal insurance. I have that as a normal personal insurance, 99318 IS, fully comprehensive insurance, which I think, even though I'm 36, is like nearly a thousand euros. So it's actually quite expensive to insure that car. It's actually more expensive to insure a 99 BMW that I found out than a 171 Mercedes. So it is a bit like the insurance companies are trying to push us away from that. But once I have that insurance, 
I'm then allowed to extend that to another policy, which means I have classic car insurance. And this is where we really are able to make a huge amount of saving. So classic car insurance is allowed on anything over, I think it's 20 years in Ireland, but because my cars are 30 years old, two of them, the SOAR and the PS13, that means that they are uh, vintage insurance actually. So I think I pay on the SOAR and the PS13, both of those cars are around about 350 euro to insure for the whole year and to tax them they're about 56 euro each because they're over 30 years so that makes them affordable so if you put that together with the bmw you're probably looking at about 1200 euro insurance i pay a year on three cars and my tax is something like six or seven hundred euro on three cars so it's not that crazy there is some limitations to that however when it comes to the sora and the ps13 i'm the only one that's allowed to drive them because it's limited and they know you obviously can't drive two cars at one time so it it's like one insurance policy for both. And there's a maximum mileage of, I think, 5,000 kilometers on both those cars, which is unlikely for me to do in a year on either of those cars anyway. So that is how I basically afford it. The biggest problem with a lot of this stuff is that you're working around the system. The system in Ireland is a lot different. If you're watching this from any other country, you have no idea how good you have it if you're from the United States or you're from, uh, if you're from UK, for example, you just, see a car it's worth that amount of money and you buy it and you put it on the road in ireland there is so much more to having a car on the road one thing i want to bring up here is something that irish people have to deal with that not a lot of other countries have to deal with which is vrt in ireland which is also vehicle registration tax the most expensive thing that you'll ever do to your car in ireland is put a number plate on it and those number plates can be worth an incredible amount of money so back in the day obviously the uk market had so much more cars they tried to protect the irish market of people not just buying it from the uk by bringing in a vehicle registration tax this tax is exclusive to ireland it doesn't exist anywhere else in Europe it eliminates free trade and it also puts us in a position where we pay more for the same thing than any other country which is insane now, I know there are some other European countries that have high tax rates but it is very difficult for us to look at the UK and say if someone buys a car in the UK for five thousand pounds we got to pay ten thousand pounds here with a registration plate on it for the same car if you import a car from Japan that car then arrives at the docks you've paid a certain amount of money to that guy in Japan for that car you've paid for your shipping and it lands but that is where it starts then the government decide what that car is worth. You have absolutely no say. So say you bought that car for 5,000 euro, they'll say the car is worth 15,000 euro, then you've got to pay a lot of money on top of that. It works out right about now to about 33%. Sometimes it can even be higher. They then brought in a NOx tax, which is like an emissions tax. And I think this is how crazy this is, is that if you were to buy a Golf for 2,000 pounds, a diesel Golf from the UK, that was say a 2009 or 10, and it cost you 2,000 pounds, then you would have to pay, I think something like almost 5,000 pounds or 5,000 euros worth of registration tax on a 2,000 pound car. Doesn't make any sense. The reason they're doing this is to try and get everybody out of older cars and get them into brand new cars from the showroom. And our cars in the showroom are also way, way overpriced. For example, the new Toyota Supra in the UK is 45,000 pounds. Here, it's roughly 90,000 euro, which means they sell absolutely none of them because who would ever pay that amount of money? You're paying Lamborghini money for a Toyota Supra in Ireland. That is why our car culture is really, really constricted. All of my cars have had different stories with vehicle registration tax and different things like that, but it is crazy. So driving a car, like for example, my Porsche Cayman GTS in Ireland, I'm paying about 20,000 euro more than the equivalent car in the UK, which is insane. For every 420D in the UK, or, or here, there's an M4 in the UK. That is the disparity between the two cultures. And it's really tough on our car culture. So I wanted to clear that up about VRT. It is a crazy tax. In fact, I'm pretty sure, and I could be wrong, you can let me know in the comments, that it's an illegal tax that the European Union fine Ireland over every year, but they make so much more money out of that tax that they just pay the fine, which sounds very corrupt. It probably is corrupt. I think we should just rise up and get over that. But anyway, it's been like that for years, so that's VRT. That makes it quite difficult. So that's why I've always pushed towards older cars like the A86 or the RX-7 I had, which are all pre-91, which means they were just 200 euro to for vehicle registration tax. On top of that, our tax system. If you guys are from not from Ireland, it, it's crazy. If you've got like a small little car, it could be 280 euro. If you're running a Range Rover in Ireland, it's 2,350 euro road tax. That's almost 200 euro a month just on road tax. The other problem with Ireland is, is that it's crazy to me that it's law that you have insurance on the cars, but also the insurance companies can dictate how much you spend. There's guys in Ireland who are in their mid twenties, and I'm sure you guys will comment below, paying 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 euro insurance a year, which is absolutely insane. 
On top of that, we've got to put into perspective that all of these old school JDM cars or old school performance cars are now rising probably 50% in value in the last two years. So when you put all of that together, being a car enthusiast in Ireland is a very, very difficult task. Not only very difficult, but very expensive. Then you add in the fact that you've got to get the cars legally through an NCT, which is like a roadworthiness test every year. And that doesn't allow many modifications. It's got high emissions standards, noise standards. So a lot of people will try and get their cars through that and it could take six or seven attempts with a modified car or like an S body or something to get through that. So the problem with Ireland is, is that it is a, they're not really pushing any of this. We're not a big enough culture here that the government cares about us. They just want to get the emissions down. We're the easiest target. Our passion or our enthusiasm or the companies that support that or the many jobs that are based on car modification are of no concern. So basically what that means is, is that we have to sort of go around all of these crazy things to try and get our cars on the road. So being a car enthusiast in Ireland isn't something I think you can do without a big amount of sacrifice. For my sake, I put 50% of all my wages into it. I don't even own a watch. I pretty much make all my own clothes and all of my jeans and stuff are from pennies. And that's not me saying I'm by any means not like I don't have money. I just choose to spend my money on cars above everything else that I, I think is cool. So that's something you have to do. You gotta commit your lifestyle to it. You gotta work really, really hard to make sure that you can do it. And I have a lot of different cars and a lot of you guys might ask the question, why would I get all these cars on loans? And the reason I bought all these cars on loans is because I'm seeing the writing on the wall that if I don't buy these cars now, I won't be able to buy them again, or I'll be paying twice the price for them. So right now is the time to get the cars I wanted, get the collection I wanted together. And if I have all those cars legal, registered, and the exact way looking and sounding and driving the way I want, I'll have them for the, hopefully the rest of my life. And they're not gonna cost me, they're not gonna depreciate massively. And if I wanted to trade a car in the future, it would be worth similar to what I wanna to trade to. So this was the time I had to kind of make that decision and take those financial loans and stuff. So if the question is, how do we afford all the cars? The simple reason is 15 years of building up some sort of modification history of cars to get to a point where we have that amount of money. Second reason is luck, because I won a huge amount of money with the Corolla. And the third part is taking loans. So there's no secret in any of that that no one else couldn't do. Whether someone wants to take that risk or not is probably up to them. After that, it comes to how do we insure them? complicated. I have some insured through the company, I have some insured personally, and then I have classic policies on some of the other cars. And it's not easy and it's complicated. And believe me, I think at this point I have 11 by three, so it'll be 33 discs coming in a year on all the vehicles we have registered. So it's very confusing to get all constantly going to DOEs and NCTs. So that is kind of how we get to where we go. So it kind of, I want to sum up you guys, it's not YouTube money, it's not ad revenue, none of that stuff. It's just hard work, it's just our own wages. We're putting it back into the cars. For me personally, it's taking a lot of loans. We won't own our drift cars for five years. I won't own most of the cars I'm showing you guys on the channel now for another five years. So it's a big risk and a, probably a big undertaking, but we love cars like you guys do. And we really want to keep them in our shed and working on them for the next couple of years. So that's why we did that. Here at Drift Games, we absolutely love online drifting. But more importantly, for you guys watching at home, we want to get you in the game as well. So we've partnered up with digitalmotorsports.com, Ireland's first online sim store, who are experts in everything when it comes to online drifting. And they're going to give you guys a full free sim rig at the end of this series. Now, I know you want to know, how do you win? But it's quite simple. Every single episode of Games Changers, we're going to release a letter. It looks a bit like this. And that letter will form a sentence. And at the end of the series, the first person who can put that full sentence together correctly wins a full simulator. And that's not bad going. So I hope this clears up for you guys a little bit of the questions you may have. If you've got any more questions about it, I'm not gonna specifically say what insurance companies we're with because I don't want to advertise any insurance companies. Uh, but if you wanna guys ask us any questions about how all that works, I'm happy to answer those in the comments below. I'm sure you guys have plenty of questions. Also, let me know, what are you paying on insurance? What can you not get insured on? Like how much trouble are you having getting a car on the road in Ireland? Because I know a lot of guys we know that are younger than us are really struggling to get anything decent on the road these days. Or let us know what you think about the price of VRT, of how crazy our tax system is, and obviously Brexit bringing in all these other duties. And let us know what you think about the actual cost of JDM cars right now, or performance cars, how far they're going up. Because we'd like to get a little discussion going in the comments below. Yeah, and that might clear things up for you guys. I said it was a nice little video because a lot of people ask me this question in a lot of Instagram stuff. So I said we 
throw it in as a little bonus video here just to show you guys uh, that we're kind of transparent about it and we're happy to answer any questions you might have. So in the meantime, guys, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot of exciting builds coming up over the next month. Remember, we're modifying 11 projects in the next four weeks. So don't want to miss any of that. Get on the subscription, hit the notification bell, which means that every time we put up a video, you'll be notified and you won't miss a couple and get left behind and start seeing the social media stuff way ahead. So we're going to try and stay as close to the uh, release date as well so we're going to try and do something and then two days later get that video out to you so we're not way way behind like we have been in the past yeah and other than that obviously go on to the drift game shop we've got a mega sale on at the moment we've got like 25 percent all the gas monkey stuff which is like for buttons we'll never be doing it again because of brexit so just get what you can while it's there we also have a 10 percent sale on everything for hoonigan and for drift games which again is a big saving for you guys if you grab a few bits and pieces that really supports the channel thank you for listening to this waffle about my car uh, life it's a stressful one don't get me wrong and I think a lot of people would say along the lines of uh, I want all these cars believe me with all these cars comes a lot of stress a lot of hassle a lot of money a lot of time but we love it that's the reason we do it that's the thing I've done this for 15 years I don't see for the rest of my life ever stopping tuning and modifying and coming up with concepts of cars and stuff like that so I love it so hopefully you guys get a little bit of advice from this video and back to business as usual on the next one with plenty of car modifying we'll see you there